Hello, welcome or welcome back to Made by Amanda Mal. I'm Amanda and I make stuff. For those of you who don't know me, I am a crochet artist. I mostly make amigurumi plushy type items that I sell at market events and online. And I recently just finished my four week stretch of four weeks at a farmer's market. This was the first time I've ever done a four week stretch at a farmer's market. It's actually the first time I've ever sold at a farmer's market, period. So this video is going to be a recap of those four weeks, an overall breakdown of how much I made overall, what sold overall. And at the end of this video, I will give an overall review of my time at the farmer's market and let you guys know if I will be back or not, whether it's this season or next. And I am basing that decision on the information that you will see in this video. If you haven't watched my farmer's market vlogs, you might want to check those out so you kind of get an idea of some of the things I will be referencing in this video. They're also just crazy <laughs> videos, so <laughs> definitely check those out if you haven't already. To start, I am just going to give an overview of the farmer's market in general and how I kind of signed up for the farmer's market. I think I signed up way back in like end of winter time, maybe February, March. That was when the applications for the farmer's market season had came out. This farmer's market stretches from April to November, I think. And the applications came out end of winter time, very beginning of spring, I think. So I definitely jumped on that to make sure I was signing up nice and early. And when you sign up, you kind of have to book out your dates and your spots for whatever dates you plan on going to the farmer's market. There were a couple different options when I was booking my dates for the farmer's market. Um, there were different rates. So the more weeks that you spend at the farmer's market, the cheaper your daily rate becomes. There was, I think, a seasonal rate, like half of a season kind of rate. Um, there was a monthly rate and a daily rate. So the daily rate was $60 a day for the farmer's market. I elected to choose the monthly rate, which brought my daily rate to $40 a day if I booked over four weeks. So I booked five weeks in advance. And because it said monthly rate, I just kind of assumed that that meant I would be there once monthly. It didn't really have any additional information on the website about that. Maybe I should have asked prior, but I did not. So I booked my dates. I um, sent my payment and I think there was like something weird about picking dates or something. So I ended up calling the event organizer and that is when I found out that I actually had to serve all of the dates in a row. So I had to serve all five weeks back to back. I was definitely a little nervous about that because I had already picked the dates for the month of June and that actually started right after my biggest event ever which was my Mayfair that I did back in May. The next weekend the farmers market started so if you watched my Mayfair video I pretty much was cleaned out after that and then the very next week I started the five week stretch of farmers markets. So it was pretty crazy I was starting with like not much inventory and if you've been following these videos I've really just been redoing my inventory every week so it's been a crazy month I'll tell you that. <laughs> so now we'll get into a little recap of how each week of the farmers market went. Starting with my very first week at the farmers market I was really nervous showing up to the farmers market but everyone was super nice. I got my spot which was the trash can spot that week. I was like set up with the trash can inside of my tent which I kind of liked. I liked having the trash can there. <laughs> it was near the kids tent and it also ended up bringing a couple people over because they were going to the trash can. <laughs> I keep thinking that people are coming to my tent but really they're just throwing things out in the trash can that's basically located inside of my tent. And I conveniently had a trash can right next to me so I didn't hate that spot. I, I kind of liked it. Everyone was super nice. The weather was great that day. Um, I ended up selling 28 items that day and my total profit after all my fees and everything were deducted was $296.20 for the day. So that was my first week at the farmer's market. I was excited about that. I 
had no idea what to expect going into the farmer's market, how much I would be making weekly. So this was the first time I kind of got a gist of that. And I thought that was decent for the day. The farmer's market is only from 10 to one. So it wasn't like I had to spend my entire Sunday there. I was meeting a ton of new people, you know, people that come to the farmer's market weekly were introducing themselves to me. All the vendors were super nice. So the first week at the farmer's market went well. My second week at the farmer's market was the farmer's market that I was introduced to the sewer spot. Nice. I had the sewer spot that week with the sewer in my tent and it was very stinky and I had a migraine and um, as far as that goes it was a little rough but this actually ended up being my best market day aside from the sewer spot and I think to some degree the sewer spot actually helped my sales a lot that day because it is the first spot in the farmer's market so if people are just passing the street they're seeing my tent immediately and I think that could have helped with sales. I also had my favorite vendor neighbors that day. I met DTS gear. They were so sweet. Also for the first two farmers markets, I did not know that I could pull my car up to my spot. So the setup and breakdown was pretty rough every week, <laughs> just for those two weeks. The third market, someone finally told me that I could pull up my car. So things got better for the breakdown and setup after that. <laughs> So for that second farmer's market, I sold 37 items, which is the most I sold in any of my weeks at the farmer's market. And I had an overall profit of $413.07, which I think is great. My third farmer's market was on Father's Day. This was when the sewer spot drama started because I did not have the sewer spot that day, but one of the event organizers was talking about how I needed to be in the sewer spot for the rest of my weeks there. And I had to speak up and be like, I can't be in the sewer spot, sorry. So that kind of started off that market on like a funky kind of note. Um, I felt like they were a little <laughs> annoyed at me, so. That was interesting. Um, that was also the market. I recruited a random man to film a, a boomerang. So that was cool. <laughs> um, I think that that day was good. I had a better turnout than I expected. I was nervous about the Father's Day turnout. I didn't know if anybody would even show up because it was Father's Day, but people ended up showing up and I did okay. I did sell 35 items. Um, my profit was a little lower that day. I made $337.21 in profit, which I guess that just means that people were buying some smaller items because that was only two items less than I sold the prior week, but I made like almost $100 less. So that's interesting. And if you watch that vlog, I did end up being on good terms with the event organizer by the end of the event. Well, at least I think so, because he did invite me to some of the um, Maker's Mart events that they're going to start doing, where it's just going to be craft vendors and people making stuff. So I feel like he wouldn't have invited me to that if he really didn't enjoy me. So. Um, that was a pro. And then my last farmer's market, which was actually only my fourth farmer's market, I did sign up for five, but if you watched my prior videos, I ended up doing a different event um, in between. And it was on a Saturday and I was gonna try to make it to the farmer's market the next day, but it was just too hot and I didn't end up making it. So I skipped that week and I had my last and fourth farmer's market this past weekend. If you saw that vlog, it aggressively rained most of the farmer's market. I got pretty lucky. I had good weather. My other farmer's markets, I did talk to some vendors about the week that I skipped when it was really hot and they said they didn't have a great turnout that week either because of the heat. So I don't think I missed too much there. But this last week it rained, which I think is probably worse than the heat <laughs> because nobody came. It was like monsooning. It ended up stopping about an hour before the market ended, but I mean, no one was really coming out. I did have crochet with me, so I was able to crochet some chickens, so it was fine. I did get some fire barbecue and I sold a couple things, so it is what it is. And this was also the conclusion of the sewer spot. 
through these videos and the help of one of the viewers of these videos, um, it got back to the event organizers uh, that vendors vendors were complaining about the spot. It was probably just me. And um, they closed the sewer spot. So that was a cool conclusion to the four weeks at the farmer's market. At this market, I sold eight items and my total profit for that day was only $59.50. I'm going to talk a little bit about my best selling items over the course of the four weeks and then I will give you the total amount of profit that I made overall. So my best sellers, which take it with a grain of salt because I didn't sell the exact same thing at every farmer's market. I definitely had some consistent items. So my number one best seller, can you guys guess what it was? It was my turtles. I sold 14 total total turtles <laughs> and that ended up being $293 of my revenue. I also sold 12 mushrooms overall. That was $144 of my revenue. I sold 11 ducky keychains in total. That was my best selling keychain for all four markets. That was $88 of my revenue. Um, I sold 10 chubby frogs. That was $120 of my revenue. I sold seven octo keychains. Those were my next best selling keychains for $56 total dollars of my revenue. And I sold five cows, which was $125 of my revenue. Those were my best selling items. So now overall, for all four weeks, I sold a total of 108 items. My total revenue before I deducted all of my fees was $1,535. However, my vendor fee for the four weeks was $160. My square fees were $19.73. My material costs for all of my items sold were $248.52 which brought my total profit that I brought home to $1,105 and some change. This was an important number to look at when I started thinking about if I will be returning to the farmer's market. I did a little average calculation to see what the average amount I was making per week at the farmer's market was, and it was about $276 per week which I think it is important. I know one of the days it was raining, but this is a rain or shine event. So if I was to book out a bunch of weeks again, odds are one or maybe even more of the weeks, I might have really bad weather like that. So I think this is definitely close to like a true number if I was to do the farmer's market again. My overall thoughts on that number is it's okay maybe for like a monthly spot if I was to do the same thing, have like a couple of weeks in a row, but they did say that I could sign up for a daily spot here and there still this season as well as, you know, next season, which I was considering. But after looking at this number, I think that a $60 daily rate is too much compared to the amount of profit I'm taking home. I think that $60 is something I would be spending on a bigger event. My overall review on this farmer's market as a whole with money aside is good. I think that the event organizers work really hard. I think that for the most part, it's organized fairly well. They promote the event pretty well. I mean, a lot of people in the area have been coming to the farmer's market for a long time, so they just know about it. So they have a, a decent turnout, but the event organizers also promote it pretty well on social media. They have all kinds of social media pages and they're posting lists of all the vendors prior to the, to the event and they're posting content during the events. So I know they work really hard to do that, which I appreciate. I think that the best parts of the farmer's market was just getting to meet a bunch of people. And like I said, like really feel like you're a part of the community. You get to see people weekly. Some of the vendors there are people that have been there for years and years and years. And they're just like such sweet people. 
So with all of those things being said, what is my decision? Will I be returning to the farmer's market? I think there is a possibility. Maybe I will pick up a daily spot sometime in the fall when it cools down a little and people are really coming through. I think that that is a possibility for me as far as the rest of like the summer. I don't think I will be returning for a daily spot. However, they do have their Maker's Marts coming up and that is a newer event that's going to be on Sundays and because it's a new event that they're promoting, the vendor fees are only $25 for that event. So kind of pros and cons, like yes, the vendor fee is way cheaper, but also it's a brand new event. So people don't know to be showing up. So I think there's a chance that I might be signing up for those later in the summer. As far as next season, I'm not sure. I'm really undecided. If I did do it again, I would have to book out like the couple, like the monthly spot where I would do a couple weeks in a row maybe a different month like closer to the fall or something like that it's just tough because i do have like pretty big fall events so it's hard to be able to say that i'll be there for a bunch of weeks in a row you know so i think that that is undecided for next year right now but overall it was a great experience i'm really grateful for my time there <laughs> I don't even know if they'll let me back at this farmer's market after these videos, but um, if they do let me back, we will see. Again, thank you guys so much if you've been with me through the duration of all of these vlogs. I do have plenty other events coming up, which I will be sharing with you as well. And thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you guys in the next one.